The voice of Sherry. Hi, good morning. This is Arlene. Welcome to Durian ASEAN, uh, the voice of discovery and sharing. Uh, today, we start off our news with uh, Channel News Asia. Um, so, the news uh, is about connectors to help bridge cultural grab, gap in Singapore. So, interest groups uh, will be formed at all 87 connect constitutions, uh, islands, island wide to help residents better understand the cultural sensitivities at the different practices and belief uh, in Singapore. And it is an initiative by the People's Association and it aims to encourage interactions and strengthen bonds among residents so as to minimize misunderstanding. Um, the association, uh, sorry, the associate professor Fatima Latif, a member and panel of the activists for community engagement or peace, said it is about taking a proactive approach in living a multicultural and multiracial nation. In fact, she also added that when you interact with people from different backgrounds, you need to have a certain level of understanding and also a level of trust. And that is quite very true. I mean, it's not, it's not, you cannot gain, you know, a closer tie or bond with another person without having a closer understanding and even having any, tr if you don't have any trust towards that particular person. And uh, for information, the through the NCEP connector program, she uh, hope also that uh, they are able to do this by creating awareness, educating people so that they understand a bit more the different culture and different practices. So uh, the volunteer will form interest groups and organize cultural activities to bring Singapore and new immigrant together. And this story was actually uh, a follow-up from a, a past uh, piece of story about Singapore's uh, Singaporeans' reaction towards uh, Filipinos having their Independence Day in Singapore. And um, because uh, due to because of this, uh, the the Singaporean people got a few um, retaliation by some leaders, and including Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong, who who thinks that who who thought that uh, Singaporeans should embrace the new immigrants together. And Dr. Sean Patrick Rosario, the CEP connector for Mallmand constituency. constituency constituency said being near Little India I think it is very important because of the recent spat of events with foreign um, workers we cannot just bring them as foreign workers who cause trouble I don't think this is the right way and for me I don't think this is the right way either I agree with Dr. Sean Patrick Rosario it is important to bring new, the new immigrant and the larger Singapore Korean community together and form a new Singaporean community. And what we need to do actually is to make them feel they are part of Singapore and encourage them to come to all the Singaporean community events. The next news is about uh, is uh, about the U.S. picketers target Brunei owned hotel over stone the gay law. So it was reported by Ping News and picketers are tagging a luxury hotel owned by the Sultan of Brunei after he signed a law calling for gay people to be stoned to death. In fact, last week, an LGBT philanthropist conference opted to cancel its booking with the group's luxury Beverly Hills Hotel. And on Friday, designer Peter Som and Brian Atwood said they would, in fact, move the Fashion Week events away from the chain. And the British actor Stephen Fry even said yesterday that he was cancelling his booking at the group's 
Coworth Park Hotel in Escort. This is something positive because in uh, in in this case, it seems like the Brunei stoning, uh, the Brunei Sharia law is not a remote law. In fact, it has caught the international attention on it and it has uh, created uh, a lot of international uh, individuals to really move forward and show their support that, you know, such law is not is not acceptable within the global community and not just within the Brunei community. And the, the fact that Brunei Sultan owns a lot of properties and including chains of hotel, the, this, uh, the, the show of protest of not putting their money invest, uh, on, you know, spending towards this hotel shows that, you know, they really care about the plights of the Bruneians and especially the gays in Brunei. And in fact, a group has now begun to picket outside the Beverly Hills Hotel and say it will educate people about the hotel's owner. And according to the Hollywood reporters, around 15 people were gathered outside the hotel on Saturday holding a banner that stated, this hotel is owned by homophobes. <laughs> That's funny. And we just want in a loving and way, uh, a compassion way to put an end to the law. And that's true. I mean, how how can I mean? Is it is just ridiculous that um, they want to uh, the, the monarchy want to wants to impose the Sharia law towards its people, but at the same time, it is not really uh, you know uh, walking the talk when it comes to do uh, living the life that they should according to the law itself. So this is not acceptable as well. And the next story is by The Nation. Investors from Thailand need to shed outdated per uh, perceptions of Myanmar, said Ambassador Pisanu. Um, in Myanmar is a land of opportunity, but Thai investors who come in search of a piece of the action should change their perception on the country. Pisanu Siva Naraj, sorry, the name is Pisanu Suvanajata, Thai ambassador to Myanmar, has suggested. He considered perception to be a key barrier to investing in Myanmar and points out that Thai investors still misunderstood the country, holding on to its old memories of drug trafficking, ethnic drive, and all that. And uh, this is not very good because Myanmar is really moving forward and there are a lot of things that have changed. In fact, I was in Myanmar last month and I witnessed a determendous change and transition. They are now moving forward. And all memories of drug trafficking, ethnic disputes or extreme poverty is almost at a pass now. In fact, the land of 53.3 million people has rapidly changed and both its economic and political landscape via this, a series of reform initiatives is moving forward and I, I can attest to this. But he, interestingly, he also said that Myanmar's economy has continued to grow even during the period of the sanction. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. If only turned to negative growth during the country's national political crisis, he added. And its rising property Pro, sorry, its rising prosperity can be seen from the traffic congestion on the city street and also from the ongoing inflow of foreign investment. For the evidence is the number of local people traveling abroad is on the rise, the diplomats say. I would say the traffic congestion is a, a sign of poor planning and poor expectation by the military regime or even by uh, the authorities themselves in in uh, expecting you know this this sort of um town town planning is important in um, accommodating a more um a, a more modern society in Myanmar so moreover 
in regards to tourists visiting the country, the number was 200,000 just three years ago, but it rose to 1.6 million last year, with a further increase to 1.8 million expected this year. It seems like uh, Myanmar is really moving forward. And I think when we talk about the traffic congestion, it is not a positive sign of prosperity. In fact, it is a negative sign because it shows that the country, even though it has moved forward in terms of uh, its uh, policies and its economy, but it has not moving forward in terms of its infrastructure and how um, the society at large is in itself the tourism certainly offers a big business opportunity on the other hand beyond the large city in Yangon, Mandalay, Miek and unspoiled city located on the coast of an island in the Andaman Sea is also attractive for investment. Meanwhile, there's also a lack of good restaurants in big city, he said. If Thailand were to leave its visa restrictions for Myanmar citizens, the number of tourists would in fact increase fivefold. Um, I would totally agree with that. And in terms of good restaurants in the big city, when I was there, I saw a lot of really good restaurants in the big city, although I would say it is still not on par with certain cities in Southeast Asia. So moving on to the next news by USA Today, US Philippines reached a deal on military accord and uh, the US will have greater access to its base across the Philippines. Um, uh, sorry, the US military will have greater access to its base across the Philippines under a new 10-year agreement set to be signed on Monday in conjunction with the President Obama. A visit and seen as an effort by Washington to counter Chinese aggression in the region. U.S. and Filipino officers confirm the deal ahead of Obama's stop and portray it is as a central part of the weakening, the week-long Asia swing. And uh, the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement would give American focus temporary access to selected military cam camps and allow them to pre-position pre fighter jets and ships. It was to be signed on Monday at the main military camp in the Philippines' capital Manila before Obama arrives on the last leg of a four-country Asian tour uh, following stops in Japan, South Korea and Malaysia. And I was there <laughs> witnessing his visit to Malaysia during the town hall meeting with the, the young Southeast Asian leaders. So uh, the ne the size and durations of the presence have to be worked out with the Philippines government, said even Mendero's uh, senior director for Asian Affairs at the White House National Security Council. And the converging would work to deter Chinese increasingly assertive stance in disputed territories. And this is uh, in relation to the South China Sea maritime t dispute, where China has been quite offensive when it comes to uh, uh, protecting the sea from against uh, uh, ASEAN uh, people and that was also one of the reasons why they are also thinking of having I mean for uh, ASEAN together with the US and China of having a code of conduct in terms of the maritime area uh, on the South China Sea and uh, based on a political analyst they say that it could furd uh, further antagonize Beijing, which sees such tactical alliance as a U.S. strategy to contain its rise and encourage China to in intensify its massive military build-up. For me, um, personally, I think it's a good check and balance. Uh, in a way, um, having China as the neighbor of Southeast Asia uh, is not really something that we would want to expect since China is a huge military and also economic power. But with other 
power, you know, having a balance or a counter uh, power like the U.S. to sort of tame the power, the rise of China, Chinese power, I think that would be a much more better strategy for Southeast Asia. The next news is reported by Washington Post and Obama say there's more work to be done on human rights in Malaysia. So President Obama went on a tour, uh, in Asia tour, uh, to a few countries in Southeast Asia, like I said just now, and one of it is Malaysia. So President Barack Obama celebrated America's closest um, ties with the Muslim majority nation of Malaysia on Sunday, even as he suggested there's more work to be done on the issues of human rights. So Obama visit to the first by a U.S. president since 1966 offered Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak a chance to show off his uh, much um, how much the nation has has advanced since President Lyndon B. Johnson stopped here decades ago. Can you imagine? Since 1966, never once a president, a U.S. president, came to visit Malaysia other than recently by President Barack Obama. Today, Mr. President, you see not rubber trees as Lyndon B. Johnson did, but soaring skyscraper. They are a testament to the transformation that is taking place here in Malaysia. That was said by Najib, our Prime Minister. He said that we, he also added that we are a modern, progressive Mus- Muslim majority nation, a multi ethnic, multi religious society. In fact, Najib described uh, the two country relationships as closer now than ever before. They were pressed to express how they reconcile Malaysia's rapid modernizations with the repression of political dissent and freedom of expression. Activists complained that Najib's government has used the the nation's anti-sodomy and sedition laws to sideline its political opening. But tension within the country's different ethnic and religion, religious group have increased recently for several reasons, including the fact that a 1996 fatwa forbidding the practice of Shia Islam is being mocked more often and a Malaysian appeals court ruling in October that a Roman Catholic church newspaper, which is the Haral, could n- the herald could not use the Arabic word Allah to refer to God because that praise was reserved for Muslim, and this would only happen in Malaysia. Uh, interestingly, um, interestingly also, President Obama, uh, in his Asia tour in Malaysia, um, he also um, has has an agenda to meet with some of the key civil society in Malaysia, namely representative of Percy, IRF, and many more. And he believed that uh, represented NGOs that um, that is based on certain values like uh, fair elections and uh, uh, freedom of religion is one of the key agenda that he feels that I believe he feels that we need to highlight, uh, it is one of the key highlights in Malaysia. And President Obama and I are both equally, con- uh, sorry, President Obama and the Prime Minister Najib are both equally concerned about the civil liberties as a principle, adding that he has eliminated detention without trial since taking office in 2009. And he, what I mean, he is Najib Razak. Um, he also added that he was to undertake these sort of reforms, but society has got to be prepared for it, for a change. That's what he said. Because what is important the end is the end result, and the end result, as the Prime Minister of the country, I'm committed to ensure peace, stability, and harmony. Well, I'm not sure whether he is concerned about civil liberties, but he did. Uh, eliminated the detention without trial act. Uh, at the same time, I wouldn't say that he didn't. Uh, he he had, you know, 
uh, he has uh, increased the civil liberties in the country because at the same time, he also uh, created a few other acts that really that that would restrict uh, the freedom of Malaysian society. And the two leaders also made the case of striking a broad trade deal, the tr- namely the Trans-Pacific Partnership initi- um, initiatives, which they acknowledge they face some domestic opposition to the idea. Demonstrators stood outside the University of Malaya where Obama was speaking on Sunday afternoon when with signs say no TPPA. And it's true that majority of these demonstrators were University of Malaya students themselves. This shows that our younger generation were very, are very concerned with the situation in relation with the TPPA. Besides that, there were a few students that managed to sneak into the um, Obama's town hall meeting and show the sign of no TPPA of uh, as sign in a in a in a silent way, but it shows that you know the students there are not as tame as you know our leaders would think they would. And the next news is by the New York Times, which is also the last news of today. In Malaysia, Obama works to solve troubles tied. Uh, the last time a top American officers ever visited this Southeast Asian region was in 1998 when Vice President Al Gore rebuked its leaders for suppressing freedom and embracing reformacy, that rallying cry of a student-led protest movement. And on Sunday, President Obama visited Malaysia to underscore how much has changed in the last 16 years now, not least in the country's attitudes towards the United States, which has evolved from deep suspicions verging on contempt to a cautious desire for a cooperation. While the White Office officers likened Malaysia to a swing state among Southeast Asian nations, uh, falling somewhere between the freewheeling democracy of the Philippines and the one-party authoritarianism authoritarianism of Laos and Singapore to some extent, encouraging Malaysia's evolution into a more pluralistic society. Uh, It was said by the officers that uh, could make it a model for the rest of the region. Hmm, Interesting. And Malaysia's remain uh, the some the same work in progress it was in 1998, blessed with an industrial, industrious, multi-ethnic population, but an often corrupt political system ruled by an entrenched Malay elite that does not hesitate to deal with its detractors through what the opposition considers trump-up charges. Speaking at a news conference with the Prime Minister Najib Razak, uh, Mr. Obama treaded politely into this issue. He said he pressed Mr. O- Najib during their meeting with the Malaysia's Civil Liberties and Human Rights Record, which has come under fresh scrutiny, scrutiny in recent weeks because of the legal travails of an opposition leader, Anwar Ibrahim. And the Prime Minister is the first to acknowledge that Malaysia has still got some work to do on this issue. Just like the United States, by the way, has some work to do. Uh, It was in fact said by Mr. Obama himself. Anwar to Malaysia is almost an important figure as Aung San Suu Kyi in Burma. Uh, it was stated by one of the human rights lawyers here, which, uh, Andrew Koo, referring to country also known as Myanmar. So if President Obama uh, took the time to meet with Aung San Suu Kyi, it is a little odd that he wouldn't meet Anwar. And it's true, he he chosen to not meet Anwar. In fact, he sent his senior um, officer to meet Anwar instead. 
claimed Mr Bauma, however, was keen to keep the spotlight on Malaysia's future and this was shown with uh, at a town hall meeting with the young Southeast Asian leaders and as well as a private meeting with some of the key non-profit organisations or NGO in Malaysia.